Hello, and welcome to the next episode of Lost in Criterion. I'm John Patrick Owatari Dorgan, and with me today is, and always, is the man whose pajamas are made of salami. I am the Adam Glass, and sometimes I need a midnight snack. It's... I'm, I did not criticize you. Yeah, well, thank you. When you're brilliant, you're brilliant. They're really easy to patch, too. Yeah, right? This week we were talking about the 1997 Iranian work, uh, written and directed by Abbas uh, Kiarostami. Oh, we forgot to practice. <laughs> Kiarostami. Uh, I, I really, I think I'm close. Anyway. No, I don't, I don't know if you're close. Uh, it's called Taste of Cherry. Uh, he, is, he is one of the pinnacles of Iranian film, uh, which means nothing to me. Yeah, I, I know, right? Yeah. Like, at the same, when I read that and, like, saw that, I was like, hmm. That's amazing, and then uh, upon further consideration, I was like, "Is it amazing?" Yeah, I, 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 I really don't know. You know, it's it's a good. He does a good job. He does a good job. There's he obviously good in this knows movie. what he's about, but uh, but uh, I don't I don't know if you know being the best filmmaker in Iran. I don't know how how great a thing that is. Right. Not to, not to downplay how great this movie. No, this is a really great. It's like movie. being the best it's, filmmaker on the bus, yeah. like the two ten bus. <laughs> it's, yes, it's. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's uh, being the manager of the poop factory. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's. I I don't want to cause any issues here, no, Adam. No, no, we're getting a, getting off to a bad start here. But uh, yeah, this is not good. Well, you know, but here's the thing: is like it's weird because like. Um, one of the c- things I started reading the article about this is the first time I've ever done this. Yeah. Um, uh, the the Criterion article. Okay. And it was from a, I forget what who it was. It's like, it was a thing that I didn't know existed. Okay. The guy who, cr- uh, like wrote the article about, it, I, I want to get his exact title correct. Okay. Um, it is. Oh, see now I'm confused. I don't know. It was like somebody who was a like, I I seem to remember it being like somebody who's okay. Rare interview with filmmaker Abbas. Uh, I cannot say his name at all. Kiara Stami uh-huh. by Iranian film scholar <laughs> Doctor Jamshid. Ak- I can't do this. Akrami. Akrami. Uh, do you think he's a scholar of Iranian film or just he himself is? Iranian? That's what I was confused about. Um. I was like, is there really, like, is there so much Iranian film? Um, there yeah, I mean, I'm scholars sure, I'm, dedicated I'm sure there's a lot of Iranian film. We just... That's what I want to know. Our reference pool is so small that it includes just Taste of Cherry. Um, right, and so now I'm really curious. Yeah. This movie does make me want to seek out more, but, you know, I don't know if I'd seek out other directors. <laughs> you know, I don't even know how yeah, I'll find little... other directors. I, uh, yeah. I got this guy I, I'm now. in a bit of a bad situation right yeah. now with this, because, like... It was a good movie, mm-hmm. and I'm really curious what being the pinnacle of Iranian film yeah. means. Yeah, you don't. It wanna... could be pretty amazing if if they're on par with him, and he's the top of the list. Yeah, this could be some pretty good films. So yeah, but you don't want to. You don't want to. You know, I don't know if I have enough time in my life to find out. <laughs> You don't want to shoot for Iranians, Fritz Lang, that's his name, and, and end up with Iran's uh, Uwe Bowl, you know? It's... Yeah, exactly, right. Yeah, th- that's what I'm worried about, yeah. is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off at the high note, and yeah. it's all going to be downhill from yeah. here. But anyway, this movie, uh, very minimalist movie. Um, very, uh, very... Uh, Weird <laughs> in that. Um, upsetting, I think, yeah. is the word. Upsetting, yeah. Actually, here's the weird part. For me, only the beginning was upsetting. Yeah. Once I knew... Okay, because I didn't do any reading before I watched okay. this, okay? Yeah. Not even the description of the movie. Yeah. Once I knew what our main character's aim was, when he finally explained to the soldier what was going to happen, uh-huh. I was no longer as uncomfortable. The fact that the man was only asking somebody to help him kill himself, 
I was okay with. Mm -hmm. The issue was, is I was like, is this going to get really weird? (laughs) Like... With the, with the soldier, right? I was like... Because he had this weird serial killer vibe about him. Yes. The main character. Yeah, because he, like, he, he, he doesn't... The way he was interviewing the soldier. He doesn't want to come out and say what he wants to do because he's a little right. ashamed But he of says it. it'll pay him really well. Yeah. And then, like... And then, like, the small talk he conducts yeah. seems really like, I'm playing to stab you and cut your body into little yeah, the pieces. Yeah, the soldier... Uh, obviously uncomfortable and reasonably uncomfortable... Even, right, and even you before feel we his get discomfort. To the point. It's even weird. Even before we it's... get to the point where he says, "Oh, I just want you to bury me," um, and then he runs away. <laughs> yeah, it's really like it's really like that entire sequence with the soldier is probably one of the most unsettling things I've yeah. ever seen on film. Yeah, because because I was not, I do not know if the next time I watch it, I will find it as much so. Uh-huh. But because I did not know even what our main character's aim was or goal. Yeah. They go so far into that sequence without revealing it. Yeah. So this, this, this. You're like, is he going to murder this guy? <laughs> yes. Or so is that? That's what I kept going through in my head. I was like, this is going to get really weird, really quick. So this is a this movie does a thing that very rarely movies do, uh, for for good reason. Uh, <laughs> but short stories, short stories can certainly get away with, and even novels could get away with this longer. Longer works. You know, this is a story about a series of conversations, and it all takes place in the cab of a Land Rover. Um, and uh, you know, it is it is a meditation. I think is is really the most accurate way to describe this. This is an, it is. It, yeah, it, it's hardly a conversation. Yeah, it is a conversation, but in reality, we're yeah. actually just listening to. Yeah, and he's not even most. Im- yeah. yeah, he's our main character. Body has already made up his mind, you know. So he's not yeah. even. He he talks to a soldier. He talks to uh, a, a priest in training. He talks a to seminarian. He talk, he talks very briefly when yeah. he's hunting for the guy to do it. Yeah, to that guy yeah. at the the quarry or whatever. Yeah, he talks very briefly to the to the homeless guy. Um, talks to the sur- soldier. Talks to the to the and they're all they're all foreigners too, you know. Everybody, he's in Tehran, and he's the only one from Tehran. Everyone he talks to is is from a whole different country, you know. Then, yeah, I picked up on that, but I didn't know what that meant. I don't know if it means, and that's that's one of my problems with this movie is I don't know if anything means anything. You know, it's so well, minimalist. The story means something. It's so minimalist, though, that it doesn't. I don't want to project too much, but at the same time, you know, I've got to project some to make. To make it interesting to, to me. To pull it together in your head, yeah. But, but well, I that's find what I'm that like, interesting. I don't... His... Know. The process he goes through trying to die... Yeah. Is obviously meaningful. Yeah. Like, and... Like, because the way we end the film, with him just laying down... Yeah. It, it's... It obviously has a meaning. Yeah. But, like, like there are elements, like the fact that everybody's a foreigner, is like... What does that mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he, he has this very... He's very uh, intent on not listening to the religious guy. You know, and, and the religious right. guy still gets to make his arguments, but he's not, no, that doesn't matter to me. You know, and then the last guy he talks to is... The taxidermist. The taxidermist, but does sort of a natural philosophy argument over, you know... Which he gives a lot more consideration yeah. to, in my mind. Yeah, you know, and that's where that's where the title comes from too, the taste of cherry. You know, finding finding that one thing you'd miss, and, and, and wouldn't Which, you miss it? Is it supposed to be cherry? Uh, he says he says mulberry. Mulberry. In the, in the story about himself, he says he climbed right. a mulberry tree and tasted the mulberries, and that's why the name is confusing. And then as he's leaving. As he's leaving, and this guy, the the taxidermist, and he works for the Museum of Natural History too. That's important to know. He's not just some taxidermist. <laughs> right, right. He's that random taxidermist. Yeah. Well, he's certainly the most. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he's he uh, yeah. before before they part ways. Uh, he says he says something about the taste of cherry, and I don't know Farsi. Oh, I, I missed that. I wasn't I listening to the Farsi, so I don't know. I don't know if. He changed the, the words the same if they got mistranslated at some point. 
Um, well, we've. I mean, it, I feel like I feel like it shouldn't have, given that we watched the actual Criterion translation. Right. <laughs> so you know, he talks about Mulberry saving his life, but then he he says something about you know the taste of cherry being perhaps something you'd miss. You know. Um, yeah, maybe he just yeah so, gives an example. Yeah, and then they need um, the taste of cherry. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, the um, yeah, it's it is one of the weird things about it, and you know how you know how works of fiction are supposed to be kind of windows into the minds of the creators. Yeah, I felt this was more so that way than any other thing we've watched. Yeah. Almost, yeah. In that, like, I felt like we were watching the director's internal dialogue on both ends, like both halves of the conversation. Yeah. In all the conversations he had, the, uh, the seemed to be parts of the writer. The essay, not necessarily the director. The essay on the Criterion website actually alludes to to a similar idea, and mentioned that you know, obviously when this was being filmed, you never really see them both talking to each other at the same time. Um, there's a occasionally we'll get a shot from the hood of the car. Um, mm. but it's, it's very rarely is it when both people are in the, when there's two people in the car. Um, if at all that I can remember. Um, yeah, I don't think we so ever see know, them in the car together. So the director, you know, during all these conversations, it's always the director with the camera sitting in the other seat, you know, as right. we have these conversations. So, so the idea that this is him you know, having a conversation with himself, uh, is, is it even more, yeah. It's it's definitely For real. there, um, yeah. So you know you can you can say that perhaps that's that's what we're going for, but there's a lot of perhaps that's what we're going for that we can get into. Well, yeah, I mean, like I don't want to say that like obviously. I mean, obviously these are real people that he picks up. Yeah, it's not, it, but it's more like, yeah, it feels like this is all internalized dialogue. Also, because the way they are all vaguely like kind of like soliloquies. Yeah. Everybody's just ranting for like fifteen minutes, yes. and then getting minimal response, yeah. and then moving on to the next person or the next dialogue. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like our naturalist rants for fifteen minutes. Yeah, our, and our main character says nothing. The soldier does not talk, basically. Basically, yeah. While while our potential suicide suicider, yeah, I think just suicide um, talks is. Uh... Proper, yeah okay potential the suicide um, talks and then the and we get a little bit more back and forth with the religious one but not yeah still not a ton he uh, they you know they actually take turns there and maybe that means something yeah. you know he 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 presents himself his his argument and caveats for for ten minutes about you know I don't need to I I'm not asking you to do this as a seminarian because I want to hear. Why I shouldn't from from a religious standpoint? I'm not. If I if I wanted to hear that, I'd find an actual imam, not not a uh, right. Yeah, not it a was student. that was interesting. But I think one of the things that's interesting about that might also if if this is a internal dialogue of the writer of the film. Yeah. Then we are faced with the pa- fact that we may be dealing with the fact that out of all of the internal dialogues, the one. Relating to religion just may be the most difficult to overcome. Yeah. Much as you would experience with, like, if you made a similar movie about a Catholic person or something like yeah, that. You know. You might get some very. the most back and forth play. The religion is in deep, that deep situation. In culture, anyway. You know, right. Being the Middle East. And that's all I'm so, saying. Yeah. I mean, no, I, th- I think you make a. You make well, a good I mean, argument. like, any. Yeah, I mean, any time that, like, if you are raised religious and then. Yeah. Your religion forbids suicide yeah. yeah when you're when you're thinking you're about doing that. something that your religion has a very strong right it doesn't even have to be suicide yeah. it can be anything that yeah that that internal conflict is going to be at its most extreme yeah whereas like that naturalist philosophy stuff is more just the kind of top of your brain philosophy you know what yeah. i mean rather than ingrained deep down inside yeah no you're absolutely you're right you're absolutely right um yeah I said I said before we started this that that you know there's there's not a lot of substance to talk about so this might be a really short episode. Um, no, I, I like the little weird thing at the end. Yeah, the yeah. little making of the music was wonderful. 
Yeah, the ending. What? Let's let's talk about the ending. The the second to last scene, not the that actual last, ending. Yeah, not not that last scene, but but the the actual ending of the movie with body. Um, because we get in our first really distant shot, we watch him in his apartment uh, through the window. Uh, very voyeuristic thing, watching him get ready to. Yeah, go. it was a weird scene. It was yeah. because, yeah. And then, and then he goes to the well, hole. and then, and then if we if we take that as still where everything is inside <laughs> our writer's head, we get into this really thing that like the actual preparation for the suicide, he has to distance himself. It can't be, yeah, yeah. can't deal with it directly. Yeah, like he has dealt with the kind of discussing it. Yeah, at this point, he has to be away from himself. Yeah, and it's very I don't know. You know, it's very distant. And then he goes. And, you know, I have to. While this movie is very obviously. Uh, naturally filmed, you know. It's 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 what it's still staged, you know. The soldiers, the soldiers <laughs> exercising, as we see in that last scene. There, it's not just that they happen by, you know. These right. Are, they, these they, are people who hired and paid to be there. Um. <clears throat> so, uh, the fact that in that last scene we see, you know, it's so it's so early. It's not. You know, he's 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 told he's told the taxidermist to come meet him at six a.m. You know, but we see a car approaching uh, as he smokes his cigarette before he lies down. You know, I I have to think that that there's a purpose that there and that car is in the frame. I wondered about it. Um, that car made me really yeah. like and, unsure because it's like, is the taxidermist coming to stop him? Yeah. So or so it's that is it just an accident? It's that suggestion, so we don't know that. But then I think at the same time, um, he doesn't actually take the sleeping pills. No, I guess that's true. Uh, at least we never see him do it. If but he, he does, lays down. He lays down in the pit, and he stares at the sky, and then the So movie he ends. was planning to kill himself with sleeping pills. Yeah. Or was he just planning to put himself to sleep so he could be buried alive? I think, I think he was planning to OD on the sleeping pills. Okay, because the interesting thing about that would be... He asks the tax. He asks the taxidermist to throw stones at him because he might just be sleeping. Yeah. So if he's planning to kill himself with sleeping pills and OD. Yeah. But if he also is just planning to be buried alive, well, it's really like I don't. Hard th- to I don't think he's planning parse. on being buried alive at any point. I think that's why he has people yell at him. And obviously, the the addition of the throwing stones, I think, is is him reconsidering Worried that, his whole plan. Yeah. I think I think it's it's you know he he wants to if he's not dead he wants to wake up and then right he doesn't get to be there buried alive. we get there and we never see him take the pills I think he's he's realized that there is something worth living and he's just waiting for the taxidermist to come and <laughs> well after I watched the film I went back and read the description and mm-hmm. it was really interesting like they describe it as a man looking for someone to help him die or rescue him yeah to rescue and that's an interesting point about it is that like if we take it at that then we're our taxidermist is possibly his rescuer yeah and i i feel like i feel like there's enough hints in the conversation yeah it does feel that way because like the way he rushes back to him yeah Yeah. after he gets out of the car and some things like that yeah um but yeah, it's just. It's but they really, don't tell us. They, they don't tell don't us. Tell it's us. a really weird ending. You know, it's just him lying in the dark in this pit, and a thunderstorm rolls in. And, you know, if that car is the taxidermist coming, we've seen that road being driven. It doesn't take that long. You know, it, right? He, so he's only going to be in there for like yeah. five minutes. Yeah, he may have already. <laughs> yeah, but by the time our 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 by the time we get to the actual ending. You know, we ought to be hearing a car door open instead of thunder in the last in the last little bit of darkness. Right. But uh, yeah. But I, th- I don't know. You know, it's there's ambiguity. There's so there. much we there's, don't know. There's so much it's, ambiguity. It's and there's so much ambiguity in this whole movie. We never know why he wanted he wants to kill himself. No. To kill himself. You know, we don't know his family situation. Um. Yeah. Every single well, other than the soldier. Yeah. The other two make references to why he wants to kill himself, but he never gives us any hints yeah. at all. Yeah. He explains that they would understand, but they would not be able to feel. Yeah. Which is an interesting point. Yeah. I've actually, um, 
I've already recommended this movie to a friend of mine. Uh, he's a he's an older gentleman uh, who who recently has been very very uh, down on his life in in much the same way that Body is. So I I, I suggested that he watch this and. He comes and goes. It, it, Otherwise, I would I would more apt take a more active role. In, it's in that, it's but. weird in that it has the feeling of the kind of movie that could help somebody think about these kind of things. Yeah, but at the same time, because we don't get a resolution that tells us what yeah. body decides, yeah, it's a little, it's it, a little, it, it's a little, still a little dark. Yeah, I wasn't wasn't quite sure if I should have done that or not. Eh, well, <laughs> but he's an adult; he can make his own decisions. But then again, like Buddy also himself. doesn't make any reasonable arguments to explain that he should kill himself. Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing is like he's presented with a multitude of arguments explaining why he shouldn't. Yeah, but Buddy doesn't ever fight back per se. He yeah. doesn't. He doesn't demonstrate to us that now, mind you, that might be saying, "Look, I don't need to justify my actions," but it might also be saying. I don't have a good justification yeah. for my actions, and that's that's kind of what I got. That he didn't, he yeah. didn't. Necessarily, that's kind of what I did too. It's the sort of thing that you say, where you know, don't question this. I'm going to do it. No, you don't want to not be questioned because you've already. You want to avoid questioning because you've made your decision. You're not. Yeah. You're not thinking any more deeply about it, and you know. There's a certain part of you know that if anyone starts questioning you about it... You start getting enough arguments. Yeah, you're going to change your which, mind. You're going to have doubts really, about, your, about your decision. Which really brings us into another interesting point about the whole concept that this is about a man looking to be rescued. Yeah. Because he picks a way to kill himself that will require the maximum amount of time spent alone in a car. Yes. With people who are... And then he's really picky about who he picks up. Yep. Like, the soldier is a kind of a misfire. But the other two are people who will argue with him. Yeah. And he has to know that. You know, even yeah, even when he tells the seminarian the, not to argue yeah. with him. He, he has, has to, know, to know that that guy will try. Yeah. And we don't, we and don't that, see how he meets the taxidermist. No. We get the assumption that this guy was just out collecting the birds. You know. So, he yeah, just since ran he has a bag full of birds. Him. But... We don't actually see him get into the car. We don't see how they meet. But, but other than that, yeah. But with like the seminarian, he makes a he makes a conscious decision to seek out this guy. Right. He's told he's a seminarian before he gets yeah. it. He knows exactly who this guy is, and still goes to find him. Right. Which means to me that it's that kind of that whole like, well, if he did that, then that must mean he does want somebody to talk him out of it. Yeah. Or at least wants to hear the arguments against it. Yeah. Which gets into the whole thing that maybe this is mostly about wanting to be rescued and not about wanting to be... to commit suicide. Which makes the ending more clear, but still not clear. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know? But I don't I don't know if it's necessarily a ploy to force someone. I think he he's still willing to go through with his plan. He just doesn't... No, I think it's more of a subconscious yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, like he keeps keying into people who will try to yeah. talk him out of it. Yeah, it's not. It's not like he's consciously making threats of violence against himself in order to. No, no, he's. I don't think it's one of those attention or something. You know, and and obviously he's not threatening violence against himself. Really, he's no, very. And he's very calm. In fact, he's himself. very unclear with them about what. Yeah. How much of a role they're going to play in his death, which yeah. is basically zero. Yeah. Because he doesn't want them to feel like they're responsible. Yeah, exactly. They're, that's, he's very, very intent that this is his decision, this is his action, but he doesn't want to just be All they are doing left. is operating a shovel. Yeah, he doesn't want to be left out in the sun or, you know, he doesn't want, he doesn't want anyone to find his body, you know? That's, uh, right, and that, that's the one thing I get picked up on is, uh, that I picked up on is that, yeah, he doesn't, it doesn't even seem that he wants it known that he committed suicide. Yeah. He just wants to disappear. He just wants to disappear, and this is how he's which is out he can weird a little bit because also, like that that tends to hint seems in my mind to hint more towards that he's not necessarily trying to be rescued. Yeah, because his plan is designed to create the minimal amount of disturbance. Yeah, 
Like he obviously doesn't want attention. It's a weird. Oh, it's weird. Yeah, but at the at the same time, you can't just disappear without disturbance. You know, this right? Guy, this guy well, has we, money. We don't, well, we so don't know his have, right, have but we also don't know his family situation. Yeah. So maybe nobody, maybe he's been fired and has no family. Maybe he's he's someone who. I mean, obviously, he believes he won't be missed because that never comes up. Right. Or or maybe he's just avoiding that because he knows he will be. And yeah, that's also wanna, true. We don't you know. know. There's a lot of there's a lot of unknowns in this movie, and it is yeah. The weirdest We're, part is that that makes it better to me. It does. It, it's just a really interesting experience to know nothing about our main character. Yeah, our main character says very few words. Yeah, I mean, he's uh, other than explaining how he wants given, them to operate the shovel, he does very little yeah, talking. Given the fact that he is our main character. He is in every scene. Uh, yes. And this is an hour and a half long movie. He does less than 50% of the talking. That's oh, certainly true. by far. Um, you know, when he's talking to the soldier, obviously he does most of the talking. And for the first, yeah, for the first half of the conversation with, you know, but that's really what it is. About halfway through the conversation with the seminarian, he stops talking. For the movie. And he doesn't hardly talk yeah. ever again. Well, and the thing about the soldier is, is it's not meaningful conversation. Yeah, and it's nonsense. Yeah, it's, absolutely... it's small talk. Yeah, it's small talk. So we, if we boil it down to meaningful conversation that tells us about our character, we're yeah. looking at much less than fifty percent. We're probably yeah. looking at twenty five percent of the movie or less. Yeah, is meaningful dialogue by our main character, which but he does a good job. Like watching him, he's doing a fantastic acting job. Yeah. The way he drives that car and responds to the <laughs> statements made by the people, yeah. but we just—he just doesn't talk. Yeah, that's one thing I loved about this movie is—is is just how it's filmed. Um, not not just the sort of claustrophobicness of of the conversation, but uh, you know, it's very obviously uh, all on location. You know. <laughs> The, yeah, the the outside noises are the noises of the city. You know, yeah, like every so. Often, am I the only one who felt like every so often, like we were going to have a crash? <laughs> they did feel. I like kept that worrying sometimes. about it. Yeah, because because he's very Cause, like obviously, we hear a horn honk yeah, and he's not paying attention yeah. to the road that much. He's very obviously driving. You know, actually yeah. driving in all of these. You know, yeah. which is why they did it in the hills and you know, there's really not a whole lot of people around. But you know, like the points where industrial machinery deafens the conversation. Yeah. Or something, a truck pulls by. And well, and then we hear something. honking horns and stuff. We hear, like, yeah. what sounds like people almost angry at him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just take it that way. Obviously, they probably aren't, but... Yeah. Well, you know, that's just how... When I heard it, I was like... So. I just, like, I, when I heard it, I'm like, oh, God, there's going to be a car crash. Yes. I, mean, I, I kind of was wondering if the movie was going to go that way. Like, really, in the conflict by... Just having him killing drive. the taxidermist I, and the guy yeah, together, or something. No, every so often I was really afraid that he was just going to take whoever was with him with him and drive off. Yeah, me off. too. <laughs> I kind of thought so too. Because every so often they do those shots where we go around a curve. Yeah, and and watching first person view of driving is terrifying. Oh yes, it it's is. always terrifying. It looks like he's going to drive over the edge. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, oh man, this took a weird turn, and I especially was wondering about it, like. After he declares that he's going to kill himself, yeah. and after how weird the conversation with the soldier was, I was like, oh, is he just looking for somebody to kill with him? Just doesn't want to die alone? Yeah. But then it, you know, it turns away from that. It becomes Thank. kind of obvious what's going on. Thankfully, it does, yes. Yeah. Man, but that soldier scene, man, that made me yeah. deeply uncomfortable. I was like, oh, is this a movie about a psychopath? Because <laughs> well, that conversation is Awkward. Yeah, it, and it really was. And you know, it's not just it's not just the soldier's lack of response that makes it awkward. You know, it's if I were the soldier, I would be exactly no. It's uh, totally appropriate. Yeah, yeah. Like this dude picks me up and is trying to make really awkward small talk yeah. with me, and then like has kind of a weird look on his face. Yeah, and that's that's promising me lots of money. That's another thing about this movie. It's very real. It feels. Yeah. Real. Um, yeah, it does. It. I did not even really realize until toward. I almost thought the director and the actor were the same person. 
Yeah. Just because of the way it's written and acted, yeah. it felt so personal. I was like, is our main actor also the director? The person who wrote the story? Yeah. And, you know. It he, felt that way. He wasn't, me. but he's still. No, he isn't. Know, he, yeah, I, I read that. He's not necessarily. But. He's, he could just be a stand-in, you know. This is this is a thing that. Yeah. It just, it felt so personal and so real. Yeah. That I, I began to see the story and that those feelings and the actor as the same thing. It was weird. Yeah. I was expecting in that little docu thing, documentary thing at the end, it, when I saw the actor just walking around smoking, I was like, oh, that's jarring. <laughs> yes. To, to me, he is the story. Yeah. Yeah. And and he is the director. He's everything. That last scene is really weird really weird you know not just because obviously it's a conscious decision to to include it and it's pre-credits so it's you know it's not that it's it's not like a there's B-side something role. about it that like the the, the director yeah. wanted us to see something and i yeah. don't know what like you see the soldiers sitting around like yeah. kind of goofing around and the music's really jaunty yeah i think I don't remember. I remember liking the music, but now I don't really remember Maybe what it was. Maybe it's just to bounce us back to show us that Maybe. life scenes of this life. Of well, that's living. possible. That if this is the story of the director's mind, yeah. showing us that last scene shows us that the director sees that there are things worth living for. Yeah, and that what he did here is part of what's worth living for. Yeah. So if we take it as the director's story, yeah, not necessarily that. actual story. Yeah. This is the conclusion to the movie, not the laying down in the grave. Yeah, but but, but the life continuing. And then, yeah. Yeah. That's weird. Cuz yeah. like I it really bothered me for a little bit because like the quality changed and everything. And I was like, is there something wrong with my my Hulu account? <laughs> like, did the internet just have a problem? Yeah, because it got real weird, right? Like the t- texture and everything changed dramatically. Well, it, yeah, it's not it's not finished. It's handheld it's, camera recorder. It's now. a handheld camera, and it's it's not edited. I'm, well, I mean, it's obviously edited, but it's not like uh, processed. Yeah, it just I was confused for a little yeah. bit. I was like, did we just go into a special feature? Yeah, but I don't think we did. I think we went yeah. into yeah, it's the, the answer to the film. Yeah, maybe you're right. You know, that's that's. I admit, you know, that switch confused me and threw me off. Yeah, it did. Really it, right. you know, it confused Certainly me. Certainly wasn't a lot. sure how to interpret it. Uh, but I think, I think, what you say, I, I think that's a very good interpretation. Yeah, you have a you have a great reading of this movie. <laughs> yeah. it, well, and only I only, I didn't realize it until we started talking about it, though. Yeah, like when I was watching, I was like, "What?" Yeah. Well, that's but, that's why we do this, Pat. Well, sometimes. we do this because we're sometimes because we think it's amusing that. Two completely uneducated in, in film dudes would take it upon themselves to watch the Criterion Collection and comment on it. Well, yeah, there's that too. At least I think that's why we do it. <laughs> yes, we we like to show how uh, how inanely uncultured we are. Yes, and a natural interpretation of it. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't I don't have a lot to add to this. I mean, it's great. Yeah, I think people should watch it. <laughs> it's it's in the list of the ones that I consider worth rewatching. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's on the list to buy because really, there's only just the one movie. Yes. Um, but it's certainly on the list of like if anybody asks me for like a couple recommendations about yeah films, then yeah, it'll be on the list. This is this is a movie I've talked about this week. This is a movie I've recommended to people since I've watched yeah. it. Um, well, since people. I watched it this afternoon, yeah, multiple people <laughs> I've recommended not just not just the gentleman I I mentioned, but you know somebody asked me if I'd seen any good movies recently. And I, yeah, I mean, so, I no, would I definitely put this on a this. recommendation. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely list this as one of the top Criterion films we've watched so yeah. far. And definitely, it, it interests me into seeing one of the director's other work. And yeah, did you read about like his other earlier works? It's like three movies in one. Yeah, where it's... It uh, seems interesting. A little depressing, but interesting. Yeah. There's a movie about a small town, and then later there was an earthquake in that town, so he makes it sort of fictionalizes his own journey into, into uh, 
going to make sure that the child actors who were in the first movie uh, are okay. You know? And then the last one is what, like, I think, like, the town coping with the uh, with yeah. the earthquake. Yeah, it's very very interesting. Seems interesting. Yeah, I I will definitely have to look more. And we do have other movies of his. Oh, good. On the on the list, I don't know. Close up. At least I kind of like want to find out though that like after he got done with this movie, he ended up making things like the transporter or something weird <laughs> like that. Like every time we see a really artsy film, I always like long to see on the list like that the next film they made was like just just pure popcorn crap. Yeah, I know it's not the case. This guy's obviously an artist, but yeah, still makes me laugh. Well, un- unfortunately, he doesn't pop again until film number uh, 519. Oh, so, uh, man. We've got a little bit of a wait before we watch more of his. No, just, of just a little one. Just a little bit. We're only, what's, how many, how many, how many years of this podcast is that? That's only. Uh, let's see, one a week, and that is 480 so that's only away. So. A little yeah, less than 10 years. A little less than 10 years. We'll get to that. We'll let you know when we get there, guys. Yeah. Hopefully you're still Hopefully listening. by then Hopefully the podcast is still uh, doing it. Oh, we will be. Yeah. Hopefully the quality will have improved. <laughs> I, I imagine that within 10 years, uh, this probably won't be a podcast anymore because some, uh, some amount of uh, technology change will force us into a different... Godzilla. <laughs> this will just be Godzilla. That's <laughs> no, I, I thought that Godzilla will have forced us to change, oh, okay. but I'm okay with this being Godzilla. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure how that'll work, Pat, but let's go with it. Yeah. I'm all very saved my life. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, well, what's next, Adam? It's a really great movie. Highly recommended. Yeah. Uh, sorry that we, I don't know, just, <laughs> we ramble. That's what we do, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, if I mean, you're I, listening I, to this at this a, point, you should know. You just stop apologizing to it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's one thing I didn't get into. I guess, what? um, you know, we kind of we kind of hinted at this, but the soldier we kind of just bypassed. But he talks to the soldier in a way that that he talks he talks about it all in terms of labor when he's talking with the soldier. He talks yeah. about everything in terms of sin when he's talking with the seminarian, and then the the taxidermist talks to him in everything as terms of nature. You know. And I think that's true. I hadn't thought about that. This, there's the you know the, the the framing, and that's very interesting. You know, we we all like I kind of interpreted though like with the soldier is more like he this is his first try. Yeah, and he isn't good at it. Maybe, maybe you know, there's that. Too. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think you're right, but that's how I took it when I watched it. Yeah, but is it like he's just pretty bad at this? <laughs> yeah. Like, because the idle small talk is just ridiculous. Yeah. Like, and then, like, he forces the soldier into green... What made it so uncomfortable is, like, when he starts trying to force the soldier into admitting he's his friend. Yeah. Yeah, this guy he just met. And yeah, he's it's talking really like, weird. I was you're like, like oh, my son. God. You're, you're my the friend. soldier's going to get stabbed out yes. in the hills. Yes. But that's okay. not what happened. He just ran no. away instead. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty funny when he runs away, though. Yes. To me, at least. Anyway. Because, like, the fear is there. It's really, like, earnest looking. All right, well. That was delightful. Since we were already closing up when I brought that up, so. Yes. (laughs) Sorry. Thanks for listening once again. This is Lost in Criterion. Are you going to tell me about next week? Yeah. Yeah, I will. I will. I'm I'm the Adam Glass, as always, with Patrick Dorgan. John Patrick Otari Dorgan. Sorry. Yeah, it's close. I keep forgetting which one I call myself on the podcast. it's, It's fine. It's fine. You change your names. It's cool. Yeah. Next week we'll be talking. You know, we'll be talking about and watching the most dangerous game, uh, 1932 <laughs> adaptation. Ernest B. Shonsack and Irving Pitchell co-directing. Um, yeah, uh, it's a great short story. I imagine it's a great adaptation. I haven't seen it, but Criterion insists that it's the most literate movies of the great days of horror. So we'll look into that. Um, what? I don't know what they mean by that. I don't know what that means. We'll find out. Okay. Anyway. See you next time. See you next time.
You've been listening to Lost in Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via lostincriterion at withtwobrains.com or join us on the web at www.lostincriterion.com.